In this video, I'm going to show you a quick making of a breakdown of how to create a simple two piece, two strip trim texture. So I have a set of props, a wooden desk, a wooden shelf, and a wooden cabinet. And I want to use the same texture on all three of these. And I want to use one material for all of them because I don't want to have to uniquely texture every single one of these. That's unnecessary. So I'm going to show you how to, to do this by using a simple plane with a cut. So the upper portion will be wood, lower portion will be metal. Then inside the UV, UV editor, the, the plane will be already done. You would export this plane into Substance Painter, assign textures or materials onto it. The upper portion will be wood, bottom portion will be metal. You would then export those textures and then you would UV every single one of these props. So they occupy only those portions of the texture. So here I have all these three props and they're all applied. So this here upper portion, all these UVs right here are wood and this bottom strip right here on the very bottom, this is all metal. And then inside Unreal Engine 5, imported the textures, created the material and here's the final outcome. Great way to create a single texture, one material to be used across multiple props. So let's get into the making of and the breakdown of creating this using Maya, Substance Painter and final result in UE5. So here are the three props that I need the trim sheet for. I want to have these three props use the same texture and I don't want to uniquely texture every single one of these props. So to make this simple and to use one texture, use a trim sheet, but you need to prep that trim sheet in order to specify which parts are going to be a specific surface. So this is a wooden desk, a wooden shelf and a wooden cabinet. And within each, with the exception of a wooden shelf, it has primarily wood, but it also has parts of it are metal. So this means that this trim sheet, this texture needs to have 80 or 90% of it occupy in wood, have a wooden texture, and then a small strip of metal. So then I can UV it and place the metal parts on that small strip of metal, and then the rest of it will go onto the wooden part. So I have these modeled, but I'm not going to export these meshes and bring them over into Substance Painter. To make a trim sheet, you actually need a simple plane. So here is a simple plane that you would use. This simple plane is created by going to create polygon primitives plane. And the size of this, I made it 300 by 300 with a subdivision set to one and one. So width was 300, height was 300. And then I rotated it. So it's flat and facing the camera. And then because I have two textures that I need within this plane, within this trim sheet, a wooden and a metal, I need to create a cut in order to separate the type uh, surface type. So that way in Substance Painter, I'll be able to assign wood to one part of the quad or triangles of this plane. And then I need another strip, another quad or polygon or set of triangles where I will assign metal. So all I did was I used multi-cut and created a cut right here on the bottom. So the upper portion is now wood, and this is where I want the wooden texture of the trim sheet to be, and the small part right here on the bottom will be metal. And then when I open up the UV editor, here's what the UVs look like for the plane. And uh, I didn't change any of the settings for the grid. Um, I just got rid of uh, most of the grid that usually shows up in Maya. So if I go to view, grid options, the default options, had all the uh, all this right here, extra grids all the way up. Uh, and all you need is this one right here, zero to one space. So you don't need the rest of it. So you go to view, grid options, and change length and width to one. And this is all you need right here. This is your working area. The rest of it is just a work in progress, kind of like temporary space where you move things out. But in the end, your texture will appear right here where this uh, UV plane is. And I didn't need to UV any of this because the default UVs for the plane are already done. And then when you create a cut, you will have a cut in the UVs as well. So with that, you just simply take this plane, uh, position it back into 0, 0, 0 world space, and go to File, Export Selection, and export this as FBX Export. With the following settings, I have smoothing groups enabled, smooth mesh, 
give it a name, and this is the plane that you would import into Substance Painter. In Substance Painter, create a new project. You would go to File, New, I use Template, Unreal Engine 4, this works for Unreal Engine 5, and then you select the exported plane. Here it is, Plane to Strip, that's what I exported, and you just load that in and click OK. And here is your plane. Now, next we need to assign the two textures that you want to use. Upper portion is wood, lower portion will be metal. So just search for a wood material and a metal material. So let's do wood first. I'm just going to use something standard. So it doesn't really matter what I use. Just basically you would look for the one that you would want to use and just drag it onto your plane. So let's say this is the one I want to use. I'm not going to tweak much of it. It's not the point of this tutorial. It's just simply showing you the breakdown, the, uh, the making of. So let's say I want to have the upper portion for the wood be this. You, you would, of course, you know, you can add additional layers. You can go through and uh, define all the settings and all the properties for it. And then for the next part, I want to have that strip of metal. So I would search for metal. So let's say I want this uh, cobalt pure. Doesn't really matter what I use. So I'm just going to drag that on top. Now this is going to overtake the texture that I have below. So I need a mask. So I'm going to select the metal, right click on it, and I need to add a black mask. So it's going to mask out the metal. And then I need to use and assign that mask only to the metal. So the metal shows up and the wood will also show up as well. So I'm going to use the polygon fill. I'm going to enable this. And then you want to make sure that you have your black mask selected. And then with the polygon fill, you either use polygon fill, mesh fill, UV chunk, one of these options. Uh, for this one, I want to use polygon fill because uh, I have a strip of polygon on the bottom. And with the mask selected for the metal, just simply click here on the bottom. Now that's going to show me the previous texture, the wood. So uh, sometimes that happens depending on, your, on the material you use. So you can see if I disable it, I can see the metal. And actually I can just replace the wood. Certain textures, certain materials show up. So I'm gonna actually delete this. Let me look for another wood. So it's a little bit more clear. Let's do the bamboo. And I'm gonna move the bamboo below the metal. So now this is a little bit more clear. So that kind of that material, that normals don't show up on the metal part. It just sometimes happens in certain materials. So now I have the upper portion where I will put all the UVs of where I want the wood to be on those three props. And for the bottom, I have a strip where all the metal parts are going to go, all the UVs. So of course you would define for each layer, you add additional layers, you can define all the properties for each one, adjust the roughness, adjust the normal map, set up scaling and tiling, rotation if you need it, and so on. You basically tweak in Substance Painter what you would want your final texture to be and how you would want it to look. And then you export this. Go to File, Export Textures, and then you would export them into a folder and you would just need to export your color, metallic, normal map. In my case, I don't have emissive, so I would disable this. And this metallic right here, this is actually three textures in one. You have your roughness in there as one of the channels, metallic as another channel, and then ambient occlusion as the third channel. And they're packed into one single texture. Now, in my case, I don't have ambient occlusion because I did not bake anything. And that's an important part when you're creating uh, trim textures using this simple plane method. You do not need to bake textures. You don't need to go to texture settings, go down here and bake mesh maps because you are simply using a flat plane to create repeatable textures a strip of textures that then you, you could just pack all the UVs into certain parts of this texture. So you don't need to bake anything. So once you've exported your textures, you would just UV your mesh. So back in Maya, you would take every single one of these props that you would want to have on this single texture, single trim sheet, and UV all of it into zero to one space. So let me open up the UV editor. So I already have these UV'd, but you can see that here's the plane. The bottom portion is the metal, the upper portion is the wood, and then for each of these props, they would occupy their specific sections within the UV editor. This bottom portion right here, that's metal, so all the handles, the UV handles, are within the metal strip, and the rest of the wooden desk is an upper portion where the wooden texture is. For the wooden shelf, for this specific one, uh, this is all wood. So it uh, occupies just the upper portion. And for the cabinet, I have the handles 
which are the metal, and then the rest is wood. The important part for this is make sure that every single one of these props have the same textile density. So if I select a UV shell or a set of UVs, let's do UV shell, and then you go to transform, and I just select a single piece, and then right here on the textile density, I click get, it's gonna give me a number. So this is going to be a 2048 by 2048 texture. So I set my map size in here. So all of these UV shells for each of these props have to be the same. So that way one texture doesn't seem low resolution compared to uh, right next to another prop that's gonna to look too high resolution. They all need to have consistency between them. And textile density needs to be the same for this. So if I select another shell, for example, within the same prop, it's gonna have the same textile density. If I jump over to this wooden cab uh, with a wooden desk, and I select, let's say this right here at the top, and I click get, it's gonna be slightly off by a, a decimal, but that doesn't matter. It's gonna still contain that 6.9.09 textile density. And as well as any of these, gonna also have the same one. And then same for the wooden, uh, wooden cabinet. I select the UV shell. That's what I want to see right here. So I click get 6.09. So all of these have the same textile density. So the texture resolution will match between each of these props. This is very important. And all of these three props, if I select all of them right here, they're all going to, all the UVs are inside the zero to one space, all the same textile density, and within a specific area of the texture for where the wood is and where the metal is. So then you use that one texture that you just created in Substance Painter and you apply that texture and then you of course create the material out of it and then you assign that material onto all of these props. So you have one texture created that will become a material and then one single material is applied to all these three props. And here's the final result inside Unreal Engine 5. I already created the material, you have imported all the textures in here. I created a material, used those textures within that material and applied them all to these three props. So simple way of creating a trim texture for your props using a two strip, two surface type of materials, and then using those textures uh, within that one material. And then you have one material to apply to all your props and reuse the textures you created. Now, if you want to learn how to use Maya, how to model your props and how to begin UV in your props completely from scratch, I have a complete home study course that will take you through all the steps and show you everything from beginning so you can become proficient in modeling environment props and environment assets, and then you read them so you can bring them into Substance Painter and begin to texture them. So check out that course, an extremely in-depth course, so you can begin to learn the industry standard software on how to create your own custom assets.